All right, so why is this important? Well, one of the basic things about glucose and insulin that most people don't realize is that both of those molecules are enormously inflammatory. And what that means is that in inflammation causes damage all throughout the body. And inflammation is part of what causes people to have pain. Like I have one patient who manages her back pain simply by managing her carbohydrates. When she eats poorly, her back hurts, and when she doesn't, then it clears up. And I have several patients who manage it like that. The, um, the reason the inflammation is so important is because they've very clearly linked inflammation to heart attacks. That's actually the number one reason that, of what causes death in diabetics is heart attacks. And it's from the level of inflammation that comes from glucose and from insulin. So that's one big factor. Like reducing the amount of, of inflammatory compounds you have in your body would be one huge way to actually get your health kind of better handled. Another thing is, is that high estrogen, which comes from the metabolic syndrome, High estrogen increases uh, your rates of cancer. It, it increases rates of breast cancer, uterine cancer, and prostate cancer. So it's both for men and for women. And high estrogen is the, and the high testosterone is also known in, in uh, OBGYN circles as PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is the number one reason for infertility in the United States. And that is 100% driven from insulin resistance. Now, going back to cancer, cancer is uh, one of the biggest things that we're mostly concerned about in all realms of life. And if people were really concerned about cancer, they would start managing their carbohydrates because tumor cells have way more insulin receptor sites on them than any other type of tissue. It's because the cancer cells, have, their metabolism is four times faster than regular tissue, and they need to have all that glucose to cause them to grow. So if you wanted to reduce your chances of cancer, getting off of carbs would be one of the top things that I recommend. And we've had patients who, when they've gotten cancer, have noticed an increase in the amount of uh, carbohydrate cravings that they have. It's been a direct correlation for that. And you know, like most people, they most people just sort of eat the way that they're eating and then they end up with some diagnosis and then they manage their diet and then they make some positive changes. But what would it be like if you actually made the changes ahead of time? So also connected to high insulin and insulin resistance is the number one reason for hypertension is, like I said before, the number one reason for heart attacks and it is a direct correlation to Alzheimer's. And by that is because there's an enzyme in the brain that deals with the, the Alzheimer's plaques. And when you have high insulin, that enzyme has to deal with insulin instead of the Alzheimer's plaques. And that's why it causes a higher rate of Alzheimer's. So the way you kind of to look at this is to realize, like perhaps from a, from a DNA perspective, is that our DNA was not designed to deal with the amount of carbohydrates that we were, eat, we are, we're eating right now. And it, I mean, think about it like this. We've had our DNA for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, and we've had grains in our diet for about 10,000. And we got away with it for a long time because for a long time of that, we were really active. You know, we were... Well, we, were, we are actually designed to be hunters and gatherers. Our description is not as farmers, but we were active all the time, even when we were farming 10,000 years ago. But as time has marched on, you know, we've gotten a couple things have happened. One is we've clearly become less active. The computer age has made us much less active. And then we've also had this push with a huge amount of carbohydrates from the low-fat um, policy that we've had, and also because we've had... Um, things like high fructose corn syrup put into an enormous amount of foods that don't actually need things like sweeteners, like high fructose corn syrup. So you find high fructose corn syrup in spaghetti sauce and in ketchup, like in foods that don't really need it. So it increases the carb load then in foods that te technically wouldn't normally have that. And so what's happened now is we've, in the last 50 years, we've had more carb intake than we've had for the last, you know, a thousand was a statistic that I read. So in this period of time, plus a level of inactivity that we have, has caused this kind of perfect storm where we are now, where there's this epidemic of diabetes, and we have, you know, this healthcare debate going on that's causing this, you know, to be a, a forefront problem that people are just starting to now deal with. But if you, you know, when you're seeing this, you can see that this is 20 years in the making. And the, the thing I want to leave people with is that it's, it, this is actually reversible. If not completely reversible, it's enormously reversible. So even if you're over in the diabetic range, you can actually get yourself back so that your, your system has very few insulin surges. You actually get to have a lot of your health come back. It, but it takes, 
you know, it takes looking at how you're eating. And, you know, for some people it's an uncomfortable thing. They don't want to, they don't want to change things. They don't like change. People don't like to give up the, their comfort foods. And I'm not saying give it up, but, you know, you might want to consider that what you're doing is, is eating typically, you know, five to ten times the amount your system can actually manage.